Welcome to worship. You are with us at the Steeple Church today. Well, not really. This is our second month of lockdown, of shutdown. But welcome to all of you at the Steeple Church, anywhere in Dundee, Brotty Ferry, or across the world. We're glad that you can join us for a short time of praise and prayer. God is good all, all the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. Especially say that in these days of change and uncertainty. Remember that God is good all, all the, the time. time. All the time. God, God is good. I'd like you to see this picture now. Um, this is something I want you to keep in your mind. You don't have to work it out completely, but think what is God saying to you? What comes to you? What thoughts does it inspire in you? We'll come to that perhaps a bit later in this short service. And I'd like to pray with you and I invite you to share with me in the responsive prayer. And the words that I'm going to invite you to respond are, we thank you, loving God. Lord, you make yourself known to us and you are present in our lives, even though we do not always recognize or acknowledge you. For all that you are, we thank you, loving God. You do not leave us orphaned, but embrace us with parental love that encourages and comforts us. For all that you are, we thank you, loving God. You ensure that we are not alone by filling us with your spirit of truth that inspires and empowers us. For all that you are, we, we thank, thank you, you, loving God. Thank you, Father, for your presence, for your love and for your encouragement. Amen. Amen. In a few moments, uh, we're going to have an interview. Howard Stevenson is going to ask some questions of Stevie Ogg. I'm looking forward to that. And then we're going to have a couple of Bible readings from uh, the book of uh, John and uh, the book of Luke. And uh, Rosalind Alexander is going to bring those to us. But first of all, let us worship God. Let's sing to his praise, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Flow, 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 flow,
So um, we're going to just run uh, a few uh, of these interviews with people involved with the uh, church at this time of, uh, of the uh, lockdown and I'm delighted to be able to speak to, uh, to Stephen Ogg and uh, it's through his vision and drive that we've um, been running the cafe church uh, in the church initially and now we do it on Zoom uh, every week. So. Um, Stephen, uh, just want to tell me a little bit about the uh, the background to the, the Cafe Nights and Cafe Church, how, how it started and why it started. Well, it came from Alpha, which uh, people know me about Alpha. It's a, it's a missionary series where people attend um, like a, a, a Christian educational program that's not too intellectually demanding. And it's something we'd done two or three years in a row and we felt it was becoming slightly repetitive, and, but we wanted to keep something going. And um, so we came up with uh, what was originally called After Alpha and is now known as uh, Cafe Night, so just some coffee shops. So, yeah, it's, it's a success. It's doing well. And uh, yeah. It, it, it's fantastic. So tell us, I mean, on, on a Tuesday before the lockdown, what sort of format did the, the evening take? Um, well, before, before lockdown, which seems a long time ago, <laughs> only six weeks ago, um, we would go to we would go to the steeple church. We'd either be in the hall downstairs or in all up, in one of the rooms upstairs. And basically, to cut long story short, we we start at seven. We say a, a circuit grace to start things off, and then we we people are encouraged to bring food and drink. If but more importantly, they're encouraged to bring themselves. <coughs> and um, yeah, it's 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 very much a group driven group driven. Um, what we call a coffee night, really. Yeah. Yes, yes. And what uh, happens after the meal then? Mm -hmm. Well, after the meal, um, it varies. Sometimes we, we do a quiz uh, straight away. Um, you're good stuff, Howard. You did, a, you did a very good quiz last week, um, which everybody enjoyed. And which I'm, I think I won. <laughs> I won. I tried to brag too much. But, um, but yeah, I, I usually do the quiz. But if I'm not doing it, um, your good self or dog does it. And uh, John's a couple of times as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a way more. I mean, there's no prizes. It's, me, it's, a, it's a way more of camaraderie and keeping yeah. people part, feel part of the group and enjoying themselves. That's the most no, important part. People really do get involved with that, don't they? I mean, some surprising people have a, uh, you know, perform extremely well in the quiz. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some. I mean, the, the, sometimes the, the people you least expect do the best. We've, we've had, you know, we've had a, uh, one of the, one of our gents, Stephen, who's who's who's. You know, hospital has watched him recently. He yeah. he um, he's very good. He's 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 excellent. You know, he's, yeah. he's he's very he's, he's greatly missed because he, yeah. he he does very well. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, he's yeah. he's mm -hmm. um, everybody seems to enjoy themselves together. So they get one point or no point. So yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it's it's very enjoyable. And so after the the quiz, uh, what do we what we normally what do you normally do then? Um. After the quiz, uh, we have a break for a few minutes. We have some, you know, if someone's been nice enough bringing some cakes, we have ourselves a few cakes and mm -hmm. have a cup of tea. And the main thing is we have a wee chat and then we play DVD. Yeah. And uh, usually it's involved with um, John's um, Jesus Storybook DVD series. Mm -hmm. Normally no longer than five minutes long. Mm -hmm. And then we have a bit of intellectual not intellectual we'd say not too intellectual stimulating talk afterwards and it's never it's never um 
serious. Yeah. It's never controversial. It's just about banter and a bit of talk afterwards, and hopefully a bit of education as well for everyone. I've been noticed it's quite interesting after that DVD that have been people sort of you know quite often share about their you know their their Christian walk and the difficulties they're having and so on and. Uh, you know, I think was it Kenny last week that he, you know, shared a bit of his testimony and so on. So it's been quite interesting that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think one thing I've learned from Pastor Max is regardless, regardless of the background, regardless of people's history, that everyone has a story to tell. Everyone has yeah. a journey they've been on and continue to be on. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I include myself in that. You know, everyone's shared some good testimonies and. Mm -hmm. With that comes friendship, and yeah, yeah everyone's really um, mm -hmm. honest. And yes, absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. as a group. Yeah. So it's been quite interesting doing it on Zoom, and and I think people have really appreciated that, haven't they? In recent weeks, I mean, a lot of people are feeling a bit sort of lonely and isolated, and 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 doing the the cafe night on Zoom has has actually been really important to them. I think. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think I think I think when. I think when the um, the lockdown happened, the social isolation isolation started, I was determined that the group would keep going. Um, I didn't know how it would keep going. I'd never heard of Zoom before, mm -hmm. but I, I had a vision that, that this group was too good a group to, to stop, even mm -hmm. even temporarily. And if and now we, it's actually grown from fortnightly now to, to weekly. Mm -hmm. And I, I was determined. I had a vision, and I'm glad glad people believed in me that we could keep it going. Mm -hmm. And and still is yeah, I know. well it's it's all due to your your drive and enthusiasm that that it's, it is what it is Stephen and we're really appreciative of that and look forward greatly to meeting up again in person and uh, hopefully it'll not be too long till till we can do that so so thank, thank you so you. much for doing this mm -hmm. no no problem and you know it's 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 only as good as the people who attend you know it, it's not just my vision but it's, it's everybody else's vision and yeah I, I can really thank people for, for coming along Oh, no. Well, anyway, enjoy the rest of your walk, and uh, I know you're into the walking football, and I think we're all going to have a go at that when we when we finish all of this. But uh, but thanks again, Steve, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Bye now. Bye. -bye. This scripture reading is from John chapter fourteen, verses fifteen to 21. If you love me, you will obey my commands. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he lives with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you all alone like orphans, I will come back to you. In a little while the world will not see me any more, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and that you are in me and I am in you. Those who know my commands and obey them are the ones who love me, and my Father will love those who love me. I will love them and show myself to them. The second reading is from Luke chapter 24, verses 46 to 52. He said to them, It is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that a change of hearts and lives and forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, starting at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I will send you what my Father has promised, but you must stay in Jerusalem until you have received that power from heaven. Jesus led his followers as far as Bethany, and he raised his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he was separated from them and carried into heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem very happy. Amen. A popular question in these days is, what is normal? 
or in this life changing pandemic and lockdown experience, we're even asking what will be the new normal? And I suppose what is normal to us depends on where we are and what age we're living in. Just think about it, the 20th century brought us two devastating world wars. The 21st century also began with a terrible act of global terrorism, the attack on the Twin Towers of New York. Today, we would say the impact of the COVID-19 virus is disrupting life globally. But it may be, it just may be that climate change will prove to be even more destructive to the planet that we're living on. Also, recognize with me that there are different periods of divine history. I'd like us to get a perspective on that now, on God's plan of redemption. For example, every year we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ at Christmas. And every year we proclaim his death and resurrection at Easter. But you know, there's much more to God's plan of salvation. Christian history goes something like this. We start with the incarnation, Jesus born on earth. Then we think about the atonement for our sins. Jesus died on the cross. Then we think of the victory of the resurrection, Jesus rising from the dead. And then after that, the ascension where Jesus returned to heaven, after which came Pentecost and the Holy Spirit coming upon the church. And then there is the church era, where the church witnesses to God's kingdom, ended by what we call the parousia, where Jesus Christ returns as king. So presently, I'm sure you recognise, we live in the church era of Christian history. And during this era, or so far it's been about 2,000 years, what is normal to us depends on where and in what period of that 2,000 years we're living in. For example, normality during the Pictish period in this part of Scotland would be very different from living in the time of the Industrial Revolution in Manchester. Or even today is different again. During this church era, where we're without the bodily presence of Jesus Christ, a question that often recurs is, why, O oh Lord, do you stand off from me? I mean, that is actually the question that the psalmist asks at the start of Psalm 10. Why, O oh Lord, are you far away? And Jesus answered this question to his disciples when he spoke the comforting words that he was going to come alongside us. He said, I will ask the Father and he will give another advocate to help you and be with you forever. That word advocate in the Greek is the Greek word paraclete and it could be translated in many different ways. If we translate it as advocate, which the New International Version does, it suggests a legal defender. It gives us power and authority to challenge systems and structures that perpetuate evil in this world. It's about seeking justice in our cities and our communities. But there are other possible translations. The word comforter is often used and that fits the whole context of our needing encouragement. The word helper or the word counsellor is often used to emphasise the role of the spirit in being alongside the disciples in their need. Some years ago, the Bible Society was working on a translation of John's Gospel in Africa, in equatorial Africa, where the Kari language is spoken in Central African Republic and Cameroon. The translators had done well, they'd reached chapter 14 and they were looking for a local word to describe this word in Greek, the paraclete, a comforter, helper, or advocate, as we've just said. 
And to their surprise and their delight, they found the perfect equivalent. Because in the local culture, if a line of porters, carriers, became exhausted from bearing heavy loads and another bended to help him up, he was known in Cary as the one who falls down beside us. Isn't that a lovely picture of how the Holy Spirit comes alongside us? He falls down beside us. But not everyone experiences this. And in the, with that in mind, Jesus said, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. The disciples are promised the Spirit whom the world cannot receive because it cannot recognise him. Some years ago, William Barclay, who was a professor of New Testament at Glasgow University, explained this very well in his writings on John's Gospel. I'm going to quote a passage of his in full. He says, We can only see what we are fitted to see. An astronomer will see far more in the sky than an ordinary person. A botanist knows far more in a hedgerow than someone who knows no botany. A doctor will find out far more about a person by looking at him than an unskilled person will. Someone who understands a little about music will get far more out of a symphony than someone who knows nothing. Always what we see and what we experience depends on what we bring to the sight and to the experience. Now a person who has eliminated God never has any time of the day or week when he's waiting upon him and listening for him. He would think that to be such a waste of time. And we cannot receive the Holy Spirit unless we wait in silence, in expectation and in prayer for the Holy Spirit to come to us. You know, I think the world is far too busy to receive the Holy Spirit. The problem is that many of us just will not give the Holy Spirit a chance. But for those who do, Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. And I hear John is using another Greek word, a word orphanos, from which we get the English word orphan. I wonder if you can imagine the look on Jesus' face as he looked on the disciples as small frightened children as he made this promise to them. I think if you have the Holy Spirit on the inside, you can withstand anything. You can withstand any kind of battle on the outside if you have the Spirit on the inside. The Spirit of Christ brings a burning sensation in our inner being. He is that warm glow that you feel within when you are in the presence of other believers. So whoever you are, think to yourself just now, where would Jesus be sitting or standing? Would he be jogging on the path with you or would he be weeding it? Think every day, wherever you are, about God's bodily presence in Jesus. Try to imagine him with you. Try to imagine him alongside you in the same way as the poem Footsteps. Now I'm alluding back to that picture we had at the start. The poem or story of Footsteps goes like this. One night a man had a dream. He dreamt he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from his life. For each scene he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him 
and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. And he noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. And this really bothered him and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I've noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there is only one set of footprints. I don't understand why when I needed you most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, My son, my precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During those times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Before we finish, there's one thing more I want to share with you. This coming week, this coming Thursday, in fact, will be a public holiday in some countries of the world, certainly in the Netherlands, where they call it Hemelvaart. Actually, few people in the Netherlands know why they have a public holiday then. But in the UK, we also have uh, a recognition that it's what we call Ascension Day, a day when we're reminded how Jesus went up from the earth and departed from the sight of his disciples, how he went to be in heaven with God the Father. This is an important thought because Jesus is not only alongside us, but he's above us. Being alongside us, Jesus is available, and the issue for us is to trust him. Being above us, Jesus is in authority over us, and our issue is to obey him. So when we're confronted by hard times, and when we're tempted to ask what is normal, I want to say, does it really matter? What really matters is that Jesus is alongside you and above you. Amen. In a few moments we're going to sing again uh, but first of all we're going to hear a poem and this poem has been written by Leslie Stewart in the Church of Scotland and it's going to be read to us by Heather Mackenzie and then we're going to pray together pray for others and that prayer will be led by David Granger and after that we're going to sing a wonderful song about the Spirit of God, which will be played for us by Rachel Toth. A New Normal by Leslie Stewart. Every normal once was new. It did not arrive, but came to be. Time and tide, call and creativity all played their part in where we arrived in this life in God, which we called normal. And what of Christ, our hope, our strength, whose normal once was family life, learning carpenter's ways? Did he welcome his call and challenge, this change to all he knew? Did he also feel loss? longing for the familiar, even while bringing life. And one day, our new normal, still becoming, will also bring new hope, new ways to be. Things will change again and always, for life and faith never stand still. God is making all things new, even what is normal.
eternal God and loving Heavenly Father, as we continue in our worship, we remember the words of your Son, Jesus. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. This assures us that you are not only to be found in our religious buildings, but you are with us now, in our homes, however scattered we are, within our hearts, around us, above and alongside us, and as we genuinely desire your presence, your help and your blessing, you are ready to support us and bless us, whatever difficulties we face. We ask now for your presence, comfort and peace to help those who are in hospital with serious problems or anxious about going to hospital. We would particularly commend children to your care, especially those who face being in hospital without the reassuring presence of a parent. We remember doctors and nurses and all ancillary staff in hospitals, care homes and carers in the community who are anxious as they go to work, each time wondering if sufficient protection will be available. We remember parents, especially those who are single or left alone as spouses and partners go to work, having to cope with children and their education and all their other needs, sometimes in res restricted space, sometimes lacking experience and facilities and juggling a host of other tasks. We remember students and senior pupils worried about their future academic path as normal processes are replaced or put on hold. We remember those concerned about employment after lockdown, furloughed but uncertain about what will happen next, or already facing redundancy or businesses facing ruin. We ask for wisdom for our politicians who are faced with agonising choices involving people's lives and well-being and worried about being held to account if they make a wrong choice. Having just received the latest news, we remember Steve and Katrina Bennett at home on leave from Rwanda. Give the family a time of relaxation and refreshment and open up their way to return to their work in Gahini. We thank you for the way they have been able to develop the hospital there, and we ask that the obstacles they describe may be overcome soon. Father, in these strangest of times we, that we are living through, we hear of many who don't usually attend church services, finding themselves turn, tuning in to radio, TV and internet. We ask that they will be drawn to what they hear and receptive to your love as it is conveyed through scripture readings and faithful exposition. May we all feel cheered by the healing work of the NHS, the generosity of the public to urgent appeals, the time given by volunteers to help the elderly, the sick, the homeless, and charities including food banks that continue to operate in spite of the dangers. Give your peace to those who are fearful at this time, those who are at the end of their tether, those who are exhausted. Give them your strength, we pray, and fill them with hope for the future. Hear, hear our prayers, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.
Well, before we do our double blessing, I, I'd like to thank Rachel and Ian Toff for playing that beautiful Scottish tune. Do you know, I have to tell you that Margaret Old, who used to be on the staff of Scripture Union and used to teach Sunday school and do beach missions, wrote many songs for children. And she wrote that song and put it to the Skyboat song, you know, with that well-known tune, which reminds us of the journey of Bonnie Prince Charlie um, after the Battle of Culloden. Now a blessing. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Heavenly Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen. And we say together, to Christ be praise, to the cosmos hope, to the city peace, to the church courage. Amen.